Thank you for staying with us. Now, let me come back to you, Olumi to, to continue from where we stopped. So, what factors do you think made the difference um, in the Zimbabwean situation, going by the analysis you gave before we went for the break? We had a military that warned Mugabe to mend ranks with um, his um, fallen, or the other comrades he was, um, I mean, the intra-party wranglings that was going on, was well orchestrated. They told him what was going to happen. And they told him if he didn't mend ranks with um, Emerson Mnangwagwa, there was going to be a crisis. So he saw it coming. And rumors have it, unconfirmed rumors have it, I was reading on Reuters the other day, that between Emerson Mnangwagwa and um, the general, who was um, the commander of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, there were a series of meetings that had outside Zimbabwe. One particular meeting was reported to have had in, in China, where all these modalities were worked out. So the difference between what happened in Zimbabwe and what happened in Libya is that the first in Zimbabwe, the first um, the forces that chased Mugabe out um, were local, and everything that happened in Zimbabwe was directly in control, or was being directly controlled by Zimbabweans, unlike in Libya where the West was in charge of the operations. So we, we there, there are two different strands of analysis entirely. Whereas Libya went bad because Libya geopolitically um, is like a, a very um, hotly contested um, region, both for um, Africa and for the Europeans, given its um, geopolitical location. I mean, Libya and Malta and then Italy are two pretty close. And then you have all sorts of trans-Saharan trade and um, human migration and movement passing through that route, given its proximity to Europe. So a lot of factors were at stake um, in the Libyan case. So um, there, was so many, there were so many reasons for the West to be interested in Libya. And there are very few reasons for the West to be interested in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe had been in crisis for more than 20 years, as far as I could recall, economic crisis. And we have had sanctions and sanctions um, being added up to Zimbabwe's crisis. And the West didn't give it down. Whereas there have been sanctions on um, Muammar Gaddafi's regime, but Muammar Gaddafi's regime is too tall because aside from the fact that Muammar Gaddafi himself was, was a strong man, the Libyan economy was in shape and then he was in charge of, it, of his country and he was doing fairly well until that intervention. He might have had his own problems, but we cannot situate what happened in Libya and use that as a template to perhaps project into what will happen in Zimbabwe. But moving forward, Jermaine, what do you think the new regime should begin to focus on, even though we know that President Munangagwa was part and parcel of the ousted Mugabe era? Well, um, Mugabe um, coming into power um, in, the, in the 80s um, was, a, was a revolutionary leader. He, 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 he came in um, standing as a liberator, fighting against a minority um, white rule in Rhodesia then, and he actually ensured that through a guerrilla warfare, guerrilla kind of um, um, war, they actually um, took power because he had tried using just dialogue and all that, but he came there and said, you know what, I'm going to try and forcefully take power. And they forcefully took power, they conducted elections, all that thing happened, and he was celebrated as a liberator. That's why the African Union to today still respects him for the role he played in ensuring that, um, that whites did not suppress those in um, Zimbabwe, and actually they, it inspired those, um, the, the anti-apartheid movement in um, South Africa in the, in, in, in the 90s. So, he is seen as an iconic figure when he first came into power. This was someone who spent 10 years in prison uh, um, for his country. He's someone who actually um, went through the pains um, for Zimbabwe. So he's done a lot right, when it comes to that respect. So he was there, even Margaret Church Thatcher, um, our former prime minister here in the UK, said that what Zimbabwe has done um, through President Mugabe in power then, um, in the late 80s, was that he was able to show how white and blacks can coexist because everything seemed like if um, Mugabe was ensuring that the whites were still there. That's what he said during his opening speech when he was coming into presidency. Um, then it was that he's going to ensure that everybody's rights are actually respected, both the whites and the blacks. Everybody was seen as an, as an example and a template that other African nations, such as South Africa, could follow. But things began to fall apart in the early 2000s when he started thinking in different ways. He became more nationalistic, started taking away the land from the white people and make and 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 do not compensate well, them um I, I think that I, I fear for zimbabwe not because um there hasn't been a change but because it isn't the kind of change that you would expect we say mugabe people say mugabe um has been a bad leader over the last 15 20 years um when you situate that within the standards 
of analyzing what or who a good leader is, that would be a yes. But Mugabe wasn't ruling alone. Um, Emerson Mnangagwa was has been with Mugabe since um, their days in, in the revolution. I mean, in the struggle for independence up to three, four weeks ago when they fell out. So there is no way you can separate what happened to Zimbabwe from Emerson Mnangagwa. I mean, as a matter of fact, um, some analysts would argue that Mugabe had been in crisis and Mugabe was able to hold on to power because Emerson Nangagua gave him all the support via the intelligence information and intelligence agencies he had. He was, he was, I mean, he was in charge of. So if Mugabe, Mugabe's rule had been um, that pathetic, it had been that pathetic because the likes of Emerson Nangagua, who is now president, um, were in charge of, of commandeering those forces. And for me, I, I think it's beyond Mugabe. I, I think we should ask questions about those who have those who have been in charge of Mugabe and Zimbabwe's economy over the last 15 years. And you cannot separate the likes of Emerson and this G40 cabal we are talking about from 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 the equation. So it's a mixed bag of so many things that Zimbabweans need to sit down and sort. I am not convinced that Emerson Nangagua is the answer, but I'm convinced beyond, beyond um, rhetoric or reasonable doubt that Mugabe's time was hot. Whether I'm asking Nangaga will now show that he's um, a new man and he wants to start afresh or he wants to turn a new leaf, it's under question entirely. But if you situate Emerson Nangagua's past with um, Robert Mugabe, I cannot say or I cannot see any basic difference. Well, thank you very much. Olumiwa Maui joined us from Dunedin in New Zealand as well as Jermaine Samoulu who joins us from UK. Um, but that's all we have to leave the conversation. We'll take a break and we'll be back with the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Don't go away. Presidency of uh, Robert Mugabe. This week's most viewed videos begins with the video of an analyst bearing his mind on the coup d'etat in Zimbabwe. To do away with the many countries in Africa. And Mugabe's situation is the last relic of this despotism in Africa. So it's about time that the change occurs in Africa, uh, in Zimbabwe. You know, he's been there for almost 40 years because they regard him as a freedom fighter and a general in the uh, Liberation Army and as a hero of the revolution because he's been able to uh, work against uh, the European settlers and has done a lot to, um, to empower the uh, uh, Africans, uh, the Zimbabwean people themselves, the majority of the people. Fourth position is taken by the video of one of the governorship candidates in the Anambra elections calling on the Independent National Electoral Commission to use technology so as to have a free and fair exercise. To make for electronic transmission of the results, their system has been built. They should test it in Anambra. They should transmit the results from the polling unit straight to their central server. And it's already public knowledge. By the time we go through the coalition point, that's when people talk about party structure and that you don't have a structure is because the structure of corruption, the structure of cheating in the election is that at the point of the world level, they compromise the officers at that world level. The parties that have the muscle, the control over police and, and other agencies of security use that apparatus to intimidate others to now fix the results they want to fix. Up next, in third, is the heated debate between the head of service of the Federation and the chief of staff to President Muhammad Buhari. Second is the unveiling of a statue of Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf by the Imo State Governor, Rochas Akoracha. While the most viewed video is that of Mr. Okoracha responding to how much the statue costs. How much is the statue? Because people are saying that uh, it's uh, over 500 million. I'm sure you heard that. If I have my way, I, I choose not to speak on the amount. 
Well, there you go. Those were the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. However, if the one you were looking for wasn't there, just go to our YouTube channel and watch, share as well with your friends, family and foes also. But then, now that change has taken place after 37 years in Zimbabwe, the world will be watching to see how the country will fare under the new regime. And we wrap the program on that note, but remember the conversations continue via the social media addresses showing on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Victor Mathias.